Hey guys, welcome to What is Truth. I'm here with Neil. Hey guys, how you doing? So today we're going to be going over um, the whole Gateway Church pastors. It seems like a lot of pastors right now, major pastors, are stepping down for sin issues. Um, this one's one of the more controversial ones than the other one. Um, with Robert Morris, uh, he was supposedly uh, committing a sin of sexual morality, but it's in the most egregious way, and it's the assault of a minor. Yeah, pedophilia. So we're gonna watch this uh, reaction. We're gonna we're, we're gonna react to uh, CBS News to see what they say on it, and uh, we're gonna give you our thoughts. Gateway Pastor James Morris and three church elders have announced that they are going to take a temporary leave of absence now. All of this amid those child sexual abuse claims against uh, church's founder and former pastor Robert Morris. The church says elders Kevin Grove, Steve Doolin, and Galen Losh have all volunteered to take the temporary leave, and their attorneys uh, are the ones who apparently suggested all of this. All three, were told, worked on the board of elders from 2005 to 2007. And that's why Morris's accuser, Cindy Clemshire, said that she contacted Morris to confront him about the alleged abuse. The church says all three elders did not have all the facts at the time. Because Pastor James Morris is the son of the man accused, he has also taken a temporary leave of absence, saying, quote, Pastor James has volunteered to do so to demonstrate his commitment to truly independent and unbiased inquiry. And the church says that all four leaders will continue their work as staff members during their temporary leave from the board. Okay, so it was, so it was his father? Yeah, I was about to say it was the okay. dad. So it was the dad, not the pastor. Not the pastor. Okay, so. um, I'm guessing from from there. Um, right. So, so, elder, so what are? Uh, let me explain what are elders for. Elders are uh, explained in the Bible with uh, Paul and uh, Peter. Um, these they're spoken about in the New Testament about how you have to have elders in the church. And the reason why you have elders in the church is to help keep the church in proper order, organization, character disposition, and integrity. So they do that over doctrine. They do that over how. The members of the church, like for example, today, an example would be how is the worship team? How are their integrity? How's the pastoral team? How's their integrity? Mm -hmm. How's the staff? How's their integrity? Right. And anytime that they falter from that, like if they make a mistake, they they you know they discuss with them and they get them back on track. Right. Minor stuff. But when it's major grievances, they either do two of two things: either they ask them to take a leave of absence, and then you know get right with God, and then to go through counseling. Or if it's something like really, really bad, they just, you know, they have to take them out of the, the form of ministry. So in this situation, it seems that Robert Morris's father was in trouble and he was yeah. the original founder of the church, which I mean is that's sad because it, it's, that church is such a strong legacy. So now knowing that that legacy is tainted because of what the father committed. And I guess a lot of people are just upset about it because of the fact that they hid it for a while. Or they said they didn't have the... Yeah, because apparently it was in 05, somewhere around there? Yeah, around 2005, 2007. Yeah. And, and uh, they didn't have much information on it. The elder said that. Uh-huh. But because of that, because they because they didn't get announced and it blew up now, now the elders themselves have to step down. So the father was in trouble. The elders didn't respond, including Robert Morris, the son who knew about it. So now they're all stepping down. I, I don't know if Robert Morris is stepping down entirely or he is just partially partially. The elders, we know, they just said right now they're, yeah. they're, they're going to be staff still working. I mean, I get they may be essential to running the church, you know, um, in terms of this financial situation. Well, but, I mean, that just shows you that um, once you get to a certain type of power level, sin is going to crop to. Oh, yeah, for sure. Easily is gonna Definitely. Crop to, and I, you become more vulnerable at that point. Like, like I'm going to bring up other examples. The one that was really grievous last year was this pastor named uh, Rabbi Zachariah, and he was a real famous pastor. He was this Indian pastor that went around the world. He, I believe he was a Calvinist. Um, if I'm wrong, um, correct me on that. But he was real famous in spreading the word of God. He was known around the world. Church pastors, no matter what denomination, loved him. He was respected by Catholics, Pro Protestants, Orthodox. Um, and then it turned out that he was running a... Uh, human trafficking, uh, uh, parlor sharps and massage rings, which is yeah. crazy. Um, the other pastor is this uh, black pastor, and I can't think of his name. Um, I'll, I'll look it up right now. I'll probably put a photo of it right now so you can know what I'm talking about. But he also got in trouble for some allegations of sexual morality outside of marriage, but it happened like several years ago. So he didn't do it recently. He did it several years ago, 
he apologized to his staff and his and his ministry, but he, he was never public with it with his church. So, uh, but he's still in the wrong from that. Um, but it just seems crazy right now that major pastors, you know, like these big pastors are are getting in trouble. It's almost like the reverse of the Catholic Church. You know how like the Catholic Church, a lot yeah. of the main bishops and all that were getting in trouble. Now it's the Protestant side. Yeah, the issue about it is that, um, I mean, don't get it wrong, just because you see that in Christianity or Catholic or Catholicism, that doesn't mean that the religion itself is bad. Right. Uh, the people in power are the ones that are corrupt. Right. You're going to see that also in the, just for example, uh, the LGBTQ community, uh, they have um, multiple cases where they have child abuse and so on. It doesn't mean that the members, most of the members from that community are bad. Or it doesn't mean that if you're a Democrat, you're going to be racist. Or if you're a Republican, you're going to be corrupt. Um, some of the people inside of those groups are the ones being corrupted, are the ones in the scene. doesn't mean that that's what it stands for. Right. It's, um, it's, when, it, when it comes to Christianity, right, you cannot judge one bad apple to the whole tree. Mm -hmm. Right? The whole tree is what bears the good fruit. The fruit is what people take and what they do with it. If the person uses it for wrong or for evil, that's on the person, mm -hmm. not on the tree. And what I'm using the tree symbolism is Christ, right? Because Christ yeah. is the, the husband, the groom of the church. And the church is responsible, like we were talking about how the elders, I'll put the verse up right now below, it's escaping my mind. But the elders are supposed to take over and maintain the church in its integrity, disposition for the ministry, that it doesn't compromise the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the situation going on with these pastors is is uh, tragic. But let's let, let me bring it this way: on how okay, how should a church respond? Let's say you're a church and you're going through something right now that may come up to be a big issue. The best thing to do as a pastor, and it may suck, but you have to do it, is be open to the congregation about the sin that was committed and step down purposely. Yeah, like that pastor I was mentioned before. I can't think of his name, but the the black pastor. He uh, uh, he stepped down and he admitted that it was due to sin, right? He admitted that to his congregation, which is good. That's the proper way to do that. That doesn't, that, that doesn't hold the same weight as someone that we found out led that sin and he was trying to hide it behind. The fact that he was open to it, he confessed it to exactly. the church and he's willing, you know, I'm going to take a you know retreat right now. I need to get myself heart, my heart right and my soul right. Yeah, I'm going to take full responsibility. Right. The and, and then the members of the church have to like not hold the pastor to a high degree like he was a pope, right? He's yeah. not a holy man. He's a he's sinless. Like he's he's full of sin, just like we're, we're, we have sin in our lives. We're so, human beings. Exactly. So he just needs to get back on track and then come back. So anytime a member or minister, it's it's good to be open about it. Say, you know, we fall out with the sin. We made these mistakes and we're going to do what's right. Of exactly. course, if you have a member that was, you know, caught that cause controversy and all that stuff, then yeah, you handle that discreetly, but at the same time, you have to be honest with your, your congregation. Because a congregation doesn't want to be in a church or in a building where there's deception. Because anytime there's any deception or sneakiness in it, right, involved, it, it, it could lead to more problematic issues, more rumors, more this. For example, let's say it was like um, a pastor or let's say it was a minister staff sent a text to a girl and he regrets it, right? And he messed up, right? It was someone yeah. who was married, right? Someone and if it's not taken care of, but it's kept as a secret, and then someone hears about it, the rumor now becomes, "Oh, he had sex with that girl." Yeah, it is spreads right. and exactly. Worse. So then it becomes, well, it's not fully true, but it's only true in the fact that he did go outside of marriage and texted someone. But now it's become even more hostile, more, more volatile in the situation. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that you have yeah. anything else? Um, no, yeah. Good. So it's unfortunate what's going on with these pastors, but you know, stay in the faith, guys. Remember to guard your heart, pastors, churches, um, and all and all those faiths. Just guard your heart, stay to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Like when Neil said, don't let the power corrupt you. Don't exactly. become like Solomon. Uh, be be like uh, Josiah. You know, be strong, be courageous, be wise, discern, do things that are pleasing to the eyes of God, and do it with your all heart. Turn down the high places in your life. And uh, remember, guys. Uh, oh, also, got to mention this. Oh yeah, the um, clothing line. Neil's got his new clothing line out. So um, you, all, you guys have a picture of it out right here mm -hmm. on the bottom. So if you guys want to purchase anything from Neil, I have a link right there. You just click on the link. If that if that's not working for you, just go to the description underneath of the YouTube video, and you'll see the link right there, and I'll take you straight to the Lion Crest website. And uh, for this Fourth uh, of July uh, weekend coming up, 
I'm gonna have 50 to 75 percent off on almost everything. So take advantage of that, guys. It's a good deal. So Fourth of July. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. And remember, when someone asks you what is the truth, the truth is Jesus Christ. Say no to the devil, guys. Amen. Amen.